Thank you for staying with us on PLOS TV Africa. Um, unfortunately, we cannot continue with the conversation on the um, uh, Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, VAP, and the situation in Imo State. Due to technical challenges, the audio and the visual um, was giving us a lot of challenges. That's part of what we are finding in the 20th century uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic compelling us to do things uh, virtually. But the show must go on. We now have uh, joining us uh, to uh, talk sports. Um, we have Wally Scott. But before then, let's, uh, what's the story about? So I'll give it to you. All right. Um, it's, uh, of course, starting with a story from uh, Chelsea, uh, who lost yesterday. For Unfortunately, Chelsea fans haven't given us a chance to laugh at them yet. But we'll get there, right? Don't, don't be in a hurry. So let's, first of all, start with Chelsea, who surprisingly lost to Wolves. And, of course, uh, Manchester City lost to West Brom last night. Um, could it maybe be a case of fatigue? Ole Scott will be here to give us a quick uh, update. So let's, first of all, start with... You know, the Chelsea um, part of it, you know, Frank Lampard uh, sometimes has a very, very good run. Other times, you know, you know, things just come crumbling down. There's also people who are losing patience with Pep Guardiola. Uh, it seems, uh, you know, his uh, tactics don't seem to be, you know, working as well as um, a lot of people have expected before. So what might be going on with these two teams? Really, I have no idea. Um, Frank Lampard um, was able to conveniently um, go for good players, not just um, anyone. You know, went for Ziyech, he went for Chilwell, he went for Timo Werner. Yeah. And good, very good players. And I, I felt like um, the problem had been solved at the initial stage. And then some, for some reasons, um, everything just went, starts to come crumble. Fatigue, possibly. Because really, um, um, you don't have a team that has those kind of players. You know, Tammy Abraham has been brought in for the team and then it still doesn't work out right for him. But um, for Manchester City, I've always said that, like Liverpool, Fatigue will set it eventually. The almighty Barcelona are gradually collapsing. The almighty Real Madrid are crumbling right now. And it's all about um, you use the same players every day. You trust them so much. Consistency is supposed to be key, yeah. But in this case, um, consistency is killing these players. They play week in, week out, day in, day out, and it will tell eventually. You can't um, cheat age, nature. And yes. I think it's setting in now. And... Um, they played against a team like Wolves, who were strong, who, who come to you, they're rugged, they really come at you all the time. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna also yeah, say, you, you know. You come to them, they come back at you. And um, there was a point in, there was a little drama in that game when um, a particular Chelsea player held onto the ball for too long, well, for the Wolves player, and he came at him, tried to get the ball back, pushed him in the process, he got a yellow card for that. That's the zeal that Wolves came in with. They, they got a penalty ruled out, a clear penalty. They got a shot at goal and Mendy was in place and then they got their final goal eventually. And some say, mm toy. They actually <laughs> actually got their thing back. You know what? But, you know, Please uh, explain yeah, what yeah. the toy is to people <laughs> you know, that you know, don't understand. Serves you right. You know, you know, <laughs> but, you know, but eventually um, they, they got a good win. And the first half it was all Chelsea taking the game to Wolves and they couldn't get the goal in the first half. And it was all Wolves in the second half. And something we must note is Chelsea didn't have a shot at goal in the second half, all through 45 minutes. Not one shot at goal. That was how bad it was for them. No, that's, that's fascinating. Terrible. You know, and of course, we would give kudos to Wolves uh, for you know, continuing to be a, a torn in the flesh of, of the big teams. In the, in yeah, they, the, they, they came to die. Wolves this season have come to die. And um, when um, the, um, the commentator was saying um, Wolves have not lost the match at this point or have not, we're, we're not, not a goal down at this point in 25 minutes in a match in first half. And I realized, wow, is that bad, good for them this mm. season? And then first half, it went like that. And then it went, came in second half and they were smoke blazing, all guns blazing. And they got the goal and then they got the second one. And it was, but Manchester City, Pep Guardiola is a very noisy person. He's very boastful. And most people, don't, they, they hate to lose. They don't want to lose. They want to do everything right. And um, he's got a fantastic set of players. But without Kuna Guerrero, he's had problems trying to get the goals. Gabriel Jesus doing very well, back from injury too. But I just think generally fatigue should be a basic excuse. I hope people out there don't think I'm looking for excuses for them. But I think you play for so long. You can Klopp has complained, Guardiola's complained, Asen Wenger in his days complained, Ferguson complained that the English Premiership 
packs too many games for the players and fatigue would set in eventually. Now, at the same time, playing in the Champions League and playing in Europe. Champions League, and, Carlin and Cup, um, the ones who are in Euro Cup and all that, there they are, they are three cup games in English Premier League Chip alone. And then you have the Champions League on the side, you have other games on the side. Most of these guys who play for these clubs play for their national teams too. And they are friendlies, they are qualifiers and all that. I think fatigue will eventually set in the years. What, what, what do you see the year ending like with regards to the top 10? Arsenal, of course, has fallen all the way down, might hit um, crude oil at some point. They won't. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but what do you Ars think? Arsenal, yes, might do very badly, might end the year very badly, but relegation, no. Um, I want to believe that, um, I've always said Arsenal, like for example, I team that um, they're a child, one child of students, who is very, very dull, but has a fantastic handwriting. Mm. What does that do for you? They play very good football, but they don't score goals, they don't win. What does the good goals do for you? Handwriting is fine, but you're dull. What's the, but, you know, but, but the truth be said, really, um, I want to believe that, I want to believe that, um, honestly, honestly, um, we might see a surprise like the, the years of Leicester, when Leicester won, and the bookmakers were like, no, Leicester can never win, and they, they did win the English Premier League. Right. And uh, we, no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. and then you see teams like Barcelona, after 11 games, are on eighth position, almighty yes. Barcelona. Real Madrid made it to the top, the, the top of the league just yesterday, miraculously. I don't know how they did that. Yeah. But I think um, the mighty have finally fallen. And um, it, there's a change. The, a, the top four is not certain. Manchester for United right was now. fourth at some point, you know, now, you know, all the way down to There was eight. a miracle last season. Everybody were like, Manchester will be in the Europa League and they got to Champions League, now they've dropped. I think it's going to be a miraculous end of the year. The pandemic has turned the tide around. Yeah, right it's now. already just ended. It's done. Um, let, let's go to boxing now. Um, I think there's a story. Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury's promoters are talking tough ahead of the anticipated uh, boxing uh, boat. Who takes this? I don't know, really. Um, I, 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 I want to be on the... I want to play the devil's advocate this morning. Um, Joshua is a fantastic fighter, and every one of my colleagues who are analysts are on the side of Joshua basically because we're Nigerians yeah. and we're being patriotic. It's not about being a true analyst. The true analyst will know that honestly, Tyson Fury will beat Joshua silly. Really? No. On a bad day yeah, for it's, him. It's almost obvious. On a, on, on a bad day for Joshua, and for, on, for, for Fury, he will beat Joshua silly. On a bad day for him. You know, the truth be said, he's a brute. He's a bully. And um, Pulev is a bully too, but a less stronger bully than Fury is. You know, they are bullies. And the only way you can get to them is to taunt them. Make them get angry. Continuously taunt them, as in make them get angry like, you, you, this small boy, you know? And he did it against Pulev and it worked for him. He dropped in round nine. Fantastic. Against Fury, Fury now knows that Joshua taunts you. He wants you to get angry. Now he knows that. And he's going to get ready for that. Now, Tyson Fury got suspended for drug usage. He has a point to prove to the world that, listen, I didn't win my fight based on using drugs. It was based on my physical strength. Now, he's a brute. He's a bully. Fury is not your regular street fight, um, boxer. He's a street fighter. He fights streets. He's like Tyson. And he's, it's kind of hard to fight a person like that because he can dig deep. You know, you're following the regular ethics and all that, and then all of a sudden, he changes his his techniques and he goes streets. Tactically, um, who do you think is, is a better fighter? Um, Anthony Joshua, a lot of people may have even predicted that uh, the Pulev fight wouldn't get to the ninth round, but you know, he threw a lot of punches, missed a lot of punches, uh, you know, dropped him a few times, but eventually still went all the way till nine. Uh, do you think you know, that may have also given you know, um, signs that Anthony Joshua may not be able to go far with Fury? There's a plus for, for Joshua here. Fury is all brawn, no brains, you know? But Joshua is all brains, a little brawn. And so Fury believes in his physical strength. He believes I can dig deep. For example, Tyson will fight you, and then when he gets, when push comes to shove, he will go to his, use his elbow, and the referee won't notice it. That's how much street Tyson is, uh, Mike Tyson, that is. But Tyson Fury now, 
is all street too, and he can dig deep. He can actually go, go for his elbow, use anything, and if referee will overlook it or not, he's seen it at all. So that's the problem. But he's all brawn, no brains. And Joshua has faced every fighter based on their strength and their weaknesses. And I think, I hope he can work on Fury on that. But Fury now knows that. He's seen him fight Pulev, and he knows what he can do. So Fury is going to come in knowing that I'm going to be fighting a very intelligent person. I only have more bronze than him. He's got more brains. And that'll be a problem, really. What, so what? It, there, there is a chance still for Joshua to come out on top. If Joshua tries to taunt him, it won't work. He's a bully. He gets angry easily. But I'm, I'm, I want to be that he's, he's a, a psychologist. He's going to work on his temper. As in, he's going to taunt you. Don't get angry. So that part won't work. So now he has to go to his brains. He has more brains than Fury does. Yeah, but as, aside the taunting and the brains, you, when you get in the ring and you get punched in the face, some of all those things don't matter anymore. You have to survive. You have to win the fight. So, Somebody was telling me in the car this morning and saying, um, just maybe Joshua could get a lucky punch <coughs> and take him off guard. Just maybe. Uh, but for know. me, technically, Fury is a better fighter. He's a bigger person than Pulev. And I think Nigerians should stop being patriotic all the time. The truth must be said. The stamina that <laughs> the stamina that we I've also seen Tyson Fury, you know, put into a fight. Um, if you watched, uh, of course, for those who watched the uh, Joshua Pula fight, it seems like he gassed out, you know, by the fifth or sixth round. Yes, but I think stamina for Fury, the plus for him is it goes beyond stamina now. Fury was suspended for four years for drug usage, and he came back and said, "I want to try and prove a point to the world that listen, I wasn't winning based on drugs." I was winning based on my physical strength. So he has, a, he has a point to prove to the world. Now, what actually pushes a man goes beyond your physical strength. It starts from the mind. Yes. And now he has a mindset and says, I have a point to prove to the world that I'm not just an addict who was using steroids as, an, as a plus for me. I have the physical strength. So first of all, in his mind, he has a point to prove to the world. Okay. The, so I, I guess, I, I guess uh, we, yeah. we'll see what happens. But I'm rooting for Joshua because I am patriotic. She's Nigerian. Too. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but if you're good, if, so you don't get disappointed, you know, that, that's why, you know, it's also Hopefully. good to. Uh, the, reality, <laughs> that's why you're giving it's us a great. reality check. <laughs> yeah. Well, whether he loses or he wins, he's still a winner what, what, to me. Uh, sorry, what does, what does Anthony Joshua have to lose uh, if he doesn't, if this fight happens and he loses the fight? This How? is the first time in like 30 years that one boxer has three belts. Those days used to be one person has a belt, one person has a belt. So if he loses this match against um, Fury, he loses all three belts. And w would he be safer fighting? What's the other guy? The American? Kuzunov. No, no, the American who. Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder. Well, I don't know. Deontay Wilder is a tough guy too. However, um, he makes too much noise. But I think, like I said, brains always works for Joshua. There, there's always room for more but than Fury, one. It's, Fury, it just might not work. But what he has to lose majorly is. His pedigree, his clout, his brand, and basically all three belts. Well, he, uh, he, somebody had it before he took it. So yes, he, he, he was taking it one, one, one. one. The other. Uh, now he has now all three. So and if, he's, bet, he's betting on all three belts right now. Uh, well, I mean, whatever happens, we shall see. Thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast Thank this you. morning. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Hello, that... hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.